father of Freemasonry. A lot of people think it started with Prince Hall, and I'm going to show you that it did. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out here thinking they got a secret because they've been initiated into a, a Peckerwood secret society. But I'm going to show you that the Peckerwood don't know nothing. The cracker, Mason, Christian, Jew, whatever he is, he just crawled up out of the cave two days ago and two days from going back up in the cave. Now, if you look at me, this is some of the studies that I've done. I'm not going to go through it all. Because you can see for yourself, I done been to Kemet three times, doing field research with Ashrock Quasi. I've been do having maybe 20 to 15 to 20 years of oil research up under my Bible, Pianki Menkepa Ra, who, who was also raised in the craft of Amin Ra under Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan. So I've been trained under Doc, under Ashra, under Pianki, under Dr. Clark. And I feel very comfortable with the information that I'm going to give to you today. I got the evidence. I got the references. You can go home, go to the library, do your research, and then get back with me. I was hoping there was going to be a lot of brothers uh, uh, of the craft that come out today. Because, you know, they say they got the secret. So I want to see what secret they got. Because I got a lot of secrets that I'm going to show you today. And I'm willing to reveal them. See, when a person not willing to reveal no secrets, they might just ain't got none. So don't be spooked out about somebody talking about they got the secret. And then they riding around with bumper stickers talking about they a part of a secret society. If you're part of a secret society, then nobody should know what you're doing. Should be no emblems, no parades, no nothing. But see, they parade around, they, they got all types of emblems and symbols all over the on the buildings, in the university system, the courthouse. So how is there a secret society? So that right there, it, it contradicts itself. That right there, I was at uh, the Pyramid of Seneferu at Dajur. That was the first true pyramid. That's Pacal's Pyramid down in Mexico. Me and McQueen went down there to do some comparative study between Kemet and Mexico. And Next week, we're going to do Omex, Voyages from the Nile. We're going to show you a lot of the evidence that we found to show that the brothers of the craft came from the Nile and came over here and developed these civilizations. Family? Now, that's me right there on my, on my dead level before I was raised up in the craft of Amin Ra. Here's the brothers of the craft grabbing me with the, the Grand Master's grip of the lion's paw, raising me up at the Grand Lodge. Here's me coming up from a dead level to a living perpendicular and ain't, and ain't been to no Crackers Lodge. That's the Grand Lodge of Kemi, where all priests in the ancient Nile Valley was raised up. And as we go on, I want everybody to take the time to, to turn their phones off. I know we, I, got, I might got to turn mine off. But take the time, turn your phone off. All questions will be at the end of the lecture. I don't want no interruptions because this video going out all over the world. And, I, and when I, what I put up on the screen, that's what the, uh, the, the information that I give, it should relate to what's on the, on the screen. Now, this is Prince Hall. Now, Prince Hall was born in 1735, died in 1807. He, got, he tried to put, uh, get a uh, charter from America, uh, the American Grand Lodge. They wouldn't give it to him. So he went to Britain, and because Britain was in a war with the United States, they gave him the, the charter. But technically, it's not recognized. Just be real about it. Go do your research. America don't recognize Prince Hall Mason. Prince Hall Masons can't go in them crackers' lodges. And, the Brit and, and all British lodges don't recognize the Prince Hall Masons. But they still go on along with the, with the fairy tale that they're part of the, uh, what you want to call Freemason of the rest Western world, but they don't recognize. That's it, right? Now, right here is M Hotel. Now, as Dr. Ben taught us, and as all evidence proves, that he was the world's 
first grandmaster. Why was that? Because he built the world's first stone structure on the planet Earth. The Step Pyramid of Saqqara, for that pharaoh right there, Zosh. There it is. The first stone structure in human history, the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, built by the grandmaster architect, Imhotep, for the Sultan Pharaoh Zosia Netaket, 2668-2649 BCE. Now for those that don't know what date Solomon came on the scene, around 900 BCE. So this date alone right here, should any, anybody coming along talking about Solomon with a Hama Biff, these, these two initiated Freemasonry, they should take a look at this. And this should put that in check immediately. Because ain't nowhere you can find Solomon's temple. You can go to Mount Moriah. It's not there. What you see them crackers wailing on the wall, they always wailing. That was a, a, the second temple built by Herod. Solomon's temple was not there. But this was built almost 2,000 years before Solomon and it's still standing. So this is why Imhotep is the world's first grand master mason. The pyramid of Maidun. This is the pyramid that came after the step pyramid. They moving towards the true pyramid. And technically, there's only one type of a pyramid, and that's a, a pyramid that comes to a point. If it don't come to a point, geometrically, it's not a pyramid. So Egypt and Nubia are the only nations that truly constructed a pyramid. This is a step pyramidal-like structure, but it don't come to a point. But they moving towards coming to the true pyramid. And under Seneferu, who was the father of Khufu, they achieved that. The world's first true pyramid in world history. 2613, 2589 BCE. And I had the pleasure of going down, me and my wife, we went down there three times. I went three, she went twice with the master teacher, Ashra Kwesi. And let me tell you, it's nothing like it on the planet Earth to see that these structures are still standing and that our African ancestors built these structures and then we can fantasize about Solomon and how I'm a biff. You go over there to Israel and they'll point to a vacant lot and say it used to be here. But here you got massive monuments all over Africa. And if I point it out and say this is where masonry started, you will look at me with contempt like I did you wrong for showing you this. <clears throat> These are the great pyramids of Giza. There's no image that you can put on any screen that is more massive than that. You got three that are in alignment with Orion's belt. You got the top, matter of fact, I gotta get my light, my laser. Let me get my laser bit. Where my laser bit? Where my laser bit? All right, got my laser. Got my laser. Right there. That's Khufu's pyramid. It's the largest. This is Khafra's pyramid, and you can tell Khafra's pyramid because it still got limestone on the top of it. At one time, all of these pyramids had a white limestone out of casing. The Arab went over there and tore it off to, to, to build the mosque, citadels, and, and buildings in the Islamic areas of Cairo. That's what happened. But you got Khufu, Khafra, and Mikara. And Mikara is the grandson of Khufu. Khafra is the, the son of Khufu. And here's Khufu. And he's responsible for the greatest structure on the planet Earth. But the Mason can't speak about Khufu. But he'll speak about Solomon. And Solomon is a fairy tale. They ain't got no tomb. They ain't got no writings. They ain't got no Solomon's temple. It's all a fantasy. They won't talk about Khufu. 2600 BCE. Now, I put this timeline up here. This comes from a, a, a Christian uh, organization, so if you get mad, get mad at them. 
says, Great Pyramids of Egypt built around 2500, 2550 BCE. Now, if you come down here, it says Ham, born 2440 BCE. Now, anybody know the biblical story? Ham is supposed to be the father of Egypt. Now, how the hell Ham going to be down there at 2440 BCE and Egypt already got pyramids? I mean, I mean, just the simple mathematics. Our people won't even look at this. A child can do that. That deduction, you got grown people walking around talking about Ham is the father of Egypt. How? Explain it to me. And then you got the ark, 2464 BCE. The great flood, 2344 BCE. And they building pyramids? Why they ain't right about it? And then ask yourself, this is a, a, a physical uh, uh, construction that's still here today. Everything they got down here for the Bible is cartoons. Yes. Where the realness at? Yes. Where the evidence is at? I'm going to go over here. And what I want you to see right here, 1700 BCE. Hyksos ruled Egypt. This is when the Bedouin kings, shepherds, came up out of the, the country of Mitannia, which is right around where Syria is today, Lebanon. They came and they attacked Egypt. And they ruled in Egypt from 1700 BCE to around 1550 BCE. Look down here, Jacob took his family to Egypt, 1701. They don't tell you that, that they came into Egypt when Egypt had been attacked, that, they, that Jacob, the Hebrews, came out of the same area where the shepherd kings came from, and that's how they got privileges in Egypt. And then when our brothers come up out of the south, got strength to kick their ass out, then it said, then there was a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. They don't tell you the whole story, though. They don't want to tell you. And this is a Christian publication. So if you get mad, get mad at them. And here you got Saul, 961, 922 BCE. And I just showed you these pyramids. Almost 3,000 BCE. And, and we got Freemasons today got enough audacity to say Solomon is the father of Freemasonry. But I ain't started just yet. <coughs> Here you got Khufu's, uh, the, the pyramids of Giza that I just showed you. And here's Sakawa, where Imhotep built his pyramid to show you that it was aligned exactly with Sakawa's, the alignment of the pyramids at Sakawa. That it's a development stage coming up out of the south. It's developing, but it comes up out of the south and Khufu takes from Imhotep to align the pyramids at Giza. These pyramids are aligned with Orion's belt. And in the Bible it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Huh? <laughs> Reverend Porkchop don't want to teach you that. Huh? Reverend Chicken Wing don't want to teach you that because he don't know himself. This is out of the Stolen Legacy. It says, all the great religious leaders from Moses to Christ were initiates of the Egyptian mystery system. This is an inference from the nature of the Egyptian mysteries prevailing custom. The Egyptian mystery system was the one holy Catholic religion of the remotest iniquity. It was the one and only Masonic order of iniquity as such. It built the Grand Lodge of Luxor in Egypt and encompassed the ancient world with its branch lodges. It was the first university of history and made knowledge a secret so that all who desired to become priests and teachers had to obtain their training from the mystery system either locally or at a branch lodge or by traveling to Egypt. We know that Moses became an Egyptian priest, a hierogramic, and that Christ, after attending the lodge at Mount Carmel, went to Egypt for final initiation, which took place at the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Other religious leaders obtained their preparation from lodges most convenient to them. <clears throat> the abolition of the Egyptian mysteries was to create an opportunity for the adoption of Christianity. 
This was the problem. The Roman government felt that Egypt was not conquered in arms and reduced to her knees, but in order to make the conquest complete, it would be necessary to abolish the mysteries which still control the religious minds of the ancient world. So that's why they abolished the crack. So they could put old Jesus in there. See, they couldn't, they couldn't put Jesus in there because the mysteries were still strong on the planet. That's like right now, even though I show you this. You know you're going back and got that white Jesus on your wall. <laughs> you ain't gonna tell you, I can show you everything on this, this lecture tonight, and it could be actual fact, and you, ain't gonna, you still ain't gonna move, remove that crack of Jesus off your wall. It's in your brain. So they knew that even though they came on the scene trying to replace the Egyptian mystery system, they knew that it was embedded in their minds. So they had to close it down. They had to ban the, uh, the hieroglyphic writings. They had to ban any speaking of the African gods now. Here you got Norma, first king of Kemet, 3200 BCE. See the plumb line? Right there. See the chisel? See the mace? See the apron? See this brother got his apron on? You see the triangle upside down? He got his apron on. This 3200 BCE. What the hell are they doing with chisels? Unless they chiseling stuff. And here's the plumb line. Again, this is showing, this is the Norma Palette. And this is one of the oldest artifacts that they got from ancient Egypt. The first king. And as you can see, they just not starting here. This knowledge is coming up out of Nubia. He has, went, he has come down to remove these peasants who have set upon our land, causing destruction, and you see their heads is missing. He got, his, got their heads in between their legs. And you see right here, you see the twa, what you call the pygmy today, they are in charge of the priesthood. To show you that the priesthood of ancient Kemet came up out of Central East Africa. The Congo, Uganda. What they call Zaire, around the Great Lakes region of Africa. Tell them to show you anything out of Israel. Don't, I don't want, after this, I don't want no debate with no rhetoric. If I show you an artifact, De debate an artifact with an artifact. Yes. That'll end the story. You'll be over there talking to yourself. This is Ptah. This is who they named Kemet after. So this lets you know that the Greeks knew who the, what the originators of the land came from. The grand architect says Ptah fashioned the universe out of the cosmic age. He's the god of the craftsmen, those who sculpt. He's the god. And now here you got William Blake. He gonna put his little cracker faggot god up there, and he got the, the compass. What they, I mean, the white man ain't built nothing. What the hell he got a compass for? They, they just, in the 1600s, was talking about the world was flat. And he got a compass in his hand. To do what? That's how you know it's a lie. Egypticus. This is what the Greeks called. That's where the word Egypt comes from. It means matching of the ka or soul of Ptah. Going back to the twa. So when you see Egypt, all you had to do, you see the PT on the end, you add the AH. Egypt Ptah. Land of the twa. Let's not be mistaken. We know where Egypt came from. It came right there from our African ancestors, the Twa, who traveled all around the world and took that knowledge. You even see the Twa in the middle of the Mayan calendar with his tongue sticking out. I'm going to get back on that. Here I quote to it. This is a description of the Egyptian temple. What part of this I want to get? You know what? I'm going to stick to the, I'm gonna stick to the, uh, the layout. This is a, a layout of so-called Solomon's Temple. You got your altar here. They got right here what you call a molten sea. This is a, 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 a basin where the priests wash their hands. It's supported supposedly by 12 bulls. And I heard a lot of Hebrews say that the Egyptians worship animals. But I could bust that Bible up and show you so many zoo types in it that for them to make that comment and not know their own history, yeah, they wouldn't have never opened their mouth. 
but see this elongated, oblong uh, structure in here. This is where the uh, most temples, most lodges, most uh, basilicas and cathedrals, they built on this structure, the oblong. You got the outer court and you got right here what you call the inner court. And this is where the ark was kept. This is the Holy of Holies. Now this is the Temple of Atfu. You see this? You see the rectangle. You see the inner court, the outer court, and the inner court. And you come in here, this is the Holy of Holies. It's the same design. I'm going to show it to you again. Now it's going to be some differences, but the basic oblong where uh, if I'm not mistaken, the north and the south is one-third longer than the east and the west. Bring it back. Same layout. Same layout, except this one's still standing, and Solomon is just what I just laid up there, just a blueprint. Ain't nothing there. But let me show you what the Masons did. I'm going to show you what the Masons did. They took the dollar, and they constructed that dollar on that same layout. Huh? I'm going to get in there. I'm going to get on that in there in a minute. We know that. But I'm going to get on it. And even, right here it says, the dollar bill is a four-sided figure. Its overall shape is rectangle. It is oblong, rectangle. The Masonic Lodge is shaped and formed in the same way the form of a lodge room should be that of a parallelogram or oblong square, at least one-third larger from east to west than it is from north to south. Masonic Encyclopedia, page 601. But he didn't go back to Edfu. <clears throat> Here you got the Muslim prayer rug. It's also oblong. They still in two. So I can line them all up at one time. We ain't gonna waste no bullets. We can kill two, three of them at one time. And this is the Grand Lodge. Well, no, this ain't the Grand, this is Karnak. This is the great temple of Karnak to show you that all these temples is on the oblong, it's on the rectangle. It's at least one third larger from east to west than it is from north to south. Taken from Freemasonry, Ancient Egypt, and the Islamic de Destiny by Mustafa El Amin, another point of interest is that the Islamic prayer rug is generally rectangle in shape, not a perfect square, it is an oblong square. The prayer rug symbolizes spiritual ascension and spiritual consideration, page 11. But they ain't going to take you back to each. Uh-oh. You see the key in his hand. That's going to unlock one door. You understand? That's the first door. If that door don't unlock, there ain't going to be no need for that key. You ain't going to even get to that key. You got to use that key to unlock the first door. And that's his heart. And you also hear the, the Masons talk about the balance. Now let me tell you something, this, 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 this papyrus right here is around 1700 BCE. So that's still over 1100 years before Solomon. Harm of Biff, two uh, cartoon characters that they created, but this is his heart, weighed on the scale, and this is the feather of Ma'a. This Ma'a Ma atop the balance, because she represents the balance. And the heart must weigh must weigh as light as a feather for you to go on. You got Tahuti here, Jehudi, who is the court reporter, recording the processions. You got one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You got fourteen up here. On other papyruses, you got twelve. And there's some different science in that. And I don't know it, but I have to go back. But there's fourteen on some, there's twelve representing the 12 jurors. Obviously, it's hard way because that door unlocked and he's here now with Heru, who was the most beloved son of Asa. And he's presenting on uh, Ani to his father Asa. I'm gonna bring it up so you can see Asa. Here's Asa sitting on the square. See the square? I know you see it. I know you see that 90 up in there. 
You see, there one down there too. See the square sitting on the square. The Mason's already talking about on the square. And you can even see his flail. If you see that flail, that's an acute angle. That's 92. Huh? Masons? Come on out. So he presents Ani to Asa. And it speaks in the Bible, in order to get to the Father, you must what? First come through the Son. He done made it. He's made it. He's made it. You see them queens back there too. You see our 